assisting an exhausted diver on the surface. A rescue on land and in the water presents risks and difficulties that must be assessed and dealt with opportunely and competently in order for it to be carried out safely. Before taking any action, ask yourself honestly if you are really capable of dealing with the situation so as to ensure that your rescue attempt doesn't become a second emergency. A cynical but realistic principle of any rescue is one casualty is better than two. There may be people around you who are better prepared or more qualified to assist in that particular situation. There is no set sequence of actions that are valid for all emergencies. You will have to assess and do what you think is best at that moment. However, some general advice can be given. Before beginning to assist an exhausted diver on the surface, you must make sure that the casualty is not panicking. Approach the diver very carefully so as not to expose yourself to danger and initially keep at such a distance that the casualty cannot grab hold of you. If the casualty is not in panic, calm them further by explaining to them what they should do, telling them, for example, in a loud, clear voice, jettison your weight belt, inflate your BC, and so on. Pass them some kind of float that they can hold on to for support. If a float is not available, give them clear, simple instructions to inflate their buoyancy compensator and jettison their weights. If the diver is incapable of taking action, you must step in, inflate their BC and if necessary, jettison their weights. If the sea conditions allow, try to get the diver to relax face upwards in the water and take out their regulator and remove their mask. Encourage the casualty to take deep breaths to prevent or overcome breathlessness. A buoyancy compensator that is inflated too much can constrict the casualty's breathing, so loosen the band around the stomach and the shoulder straps if necessary. While giving assistance, always maintain contact with the casualty and explain what is happening, using encouraging words and gestures. If the casualty recovers physically and mentally, they will be able to swim slowly back to shore or the boat on their own. If this is not the case, you will have to give assistance. In order to conserve energy, it may be best to remove the aqualung. However, the innumerable circumstances are too variable to establish a general rule, so you must assess what is the best thing to do in that particular situation. Always keep in mind the order of priority. Assess if the conditions are safe enough for you to act. Take action so as to never put yourself in danger. Make sure that the diver is not in panic. Try to get the diver to help him or herself. Prevent water getting into the diver's airways. Help the diver to stay buoyant. Encourage the diver to breathe deeply.